It's another Matang here with Teacher Jenny joining me for another topic. This time we are doing hypothesis testing for a t-test of two correlated samples or t-test for paired or match samples. A mathematics teacher of the university wanted to find out if his new method of teaching is effective. He administered a test in January and administered its same test at the end of the grading period. Fifteen students were selected at random. Test the hypothesis of no significant improvement in the student scores from the pre-test to the post-test using the following results and using level of significance at 0 0.05. First, we are going to consider writing our null and alternative hypothesis. So based on our problem, it says there, we are to test the hypothesis of no significant improvement. This one, no significant improvement is our null hypothesis because again, when you say hypothesis, this will always be the statement of no significance. So that is why under null hypothesis, there is no significant improvement in the student's scores from the pretest to the post-test using his new method of teaching. In symbol, we are going to do compare the two means and that should be equal to the other mean. Next one, we have the alternative. So the alternative, even though it was mentioned here that uh, he wanted to find out whether the new method of teaching is effective. And we've got also the improvement here. Some of you might be uh, thinking that that is greater than. Well, in fact, take note, our null hypothesis here is there is no significant improvement. To negate that one or to get the opposing of that one will always be there is significant improvement. It should be on the two-tailed aspect or a non-directional because once we try to reject an all hypothesis here later on, if that is the case, we will be accepting the, no the alternative hypothesis here. But our tetas would not somehow suggest as to whatever is the direction of our um change therein or what's the direction of our result therein it might be improvement or it might not be an improvement so that is why our alternative here must be there is significant improvement so to write that in symbol we have that as alternative hypothesis your two means here is not equal to each other so let us now go for the second, our second, uh, te second step of hypothesis testing. So here we are going to determine the type of test or the appropriate test statistic tool for us to use here on this problem. So since we have there based on our uh, given scenario and so with the sample, we have here a less than 30 samples. What we have here is the same sample. We have only one sample, only that they are given different uh, teaching approach or method. So they are, or this one is an example of a paired t-test. We have a post-test and pre-test, so that means to say we have a paired t-test, meaning to say there is only one sample, but there are two um, learning style or teaching method being introduced to that particular sample. So the next one after identifying the appropriate test to be used, we are now going to move to step number three, which is det determining the critical value. Letter C. So first, we are going to identify our type of tailed test in this particular problem.
problem. So based on our alternative and so with the null hypothesis a while ago, if we try to recall, null hypothesis, we have that one as your two means are equal. Well, the alternative there are going to be with two means that are not equal. So based on the alternative, we can now say that the type of tail test here is a two-tailed test or a non-directional test. So we also need the, the level of significance, which is 0 0.05. And then we need the DF. And so with the critical value, we will be getting or obtaining that one based on our next um, process. We are using here an Excel. So using our Excel, we are going to compete for the t-test, the paired t-test. We don't need to check whether they have equal variances or unequal. All we have to do is to go through with the data and then look for the data analysis. Then look for the t-test paired to sample for means. Click on that and then Okay, so next, we are going to input our input range. We have the pretest, and then next, our second uh, input range, the post test. Then we click on the output range, and then click wherever you wanted to your to place your output, and then click OK. So there you go with the result. You have your different informations. We have the mean variance, observations, Pearson correlation, hypothesis, hypothesized mean difference, and then DF, the T start, the P value on one tail, the T critical on one tail, and then the P value on two tail, and the T critical on two tail. Make sure that you are going to round it off to three decimal places. Okay, we are now ready to complete our missing information for the step number three. A while ago, we had two-tailed test, level of significance, but we don't have the DF. DF here is shown on the table. You don't need to compute that one. DF is equivalent to 14. We also have the critical value. The critical value there is, based on the table, we have the two-tailed crate critical value which is 2.145 and this one here should be a positive negative uh, value because that's two tail so we are now ready for our computed test statistic here so under step number four what we're getting here is going to be our t stat this is the value for t which is negative 1.461 and then we also need the information of the p-value or this is the probability value under two tails so we have this as 0.166 so p is 0.166 now in research paper we don't need to write the zero in there 
for the p-value so that will be written like that now we are now ready to get the decision we may go for uh, comparing the t statistics or the test statistic here for t value and so with a critical value to get the, the decision there or what we are commonly using on doing the research is the p-value so the p-value there compare that one to the level of significance and that will be your basis for the decision we are now ready to write our decision here since we have already our value for the P and so with our um, level of significance. Okay, since we have already the P value there and based on our level of significance, which is 0 0.05, our P value a while ago was 0.166. So comparing that one, 0.166 there is greater than 0.05. So we are going to not reject our HO. So meaning to say that there is no significant improvement in the student's course from the pretest to the post-test using this new method of teaching. So this is your teacher, Jenny. Once again, please practice and practice so that you can get this one and we'll be able to understand and also get everything else done.